Good afternoon. Um, I'm going to talk to you about our, our airport. Um, I'll start with an old slide. Um, uh, I think the airport we have, and we, uh, our chief executive mentioned earlier that what, what an important part, piece of infrastructure it is to Hong Kong. And obviously, you won't be surprised to know that I believe that truly. But it was, let's remember, um, it, it was the foresight of very good planning in the beginning of the early 90s, uh, brilliantly executed by Douglas, who's watching me somewhere, I'm sure. Um, uh, <laughs> and, and the contractors, sorry, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> And, and, and James, you were, James, you were doing all the other bits. The Airport Corps project, of course, was 10 projects. The airport was just one of them. Um, but nonetheless, uh, it, it was brilliantly done and a lot of innovation. Um, and, and we still today uh, reap the benefits of, of that good planning uh, for the airport. Let's, um, so the airport, uh, we're two runways. We, have, we didn't have two runways when we opened, of course, in 98. This is our, our, our 20th year uh, of operation. So we have our birthday in the middle of the year. Um, so it's, it's strange to think 20 years since we, we opened, and yet the, the, the airport is still current, still um, highly regarded. Um, but let's remember, when it was first opened, it had many, many innovations. It was at its time the biggest single terminal building at any airport. At that time, people thought you can't have a build, terminal building that big uh, because of the inefficiency, supposedly, of, of taxiing aircraft, etc. So um, it, there were lots of innovations. Uh, one of the biggest innovations, our iconic Terminal 1, uh, was an incredibly flexible building. Uh, there are constraints with it, but nonetheless, uh, it, it, it did anticipate the fact that, that um, things change. You can never get the planning perfect. So um, we've been able to modify it and, and change it many, many times. Um, we today handle 100 airlines, uh, 220 destinations. 50 of those are, are into mainland. We're both regional and international, but of course, all our flights are international, um, which means um, we're about the third biggest international air airport in the world. Uh, our growth since the, the opening 20 years ago, um, from 29 right up to, um, and we are at the moment, well over 70 million passengers this year. Um, we are the biggest, uh, unlike the very, very busy uh, passenger, terminal, to, uh, passenger airports, um, we also have, we are in fact the biggest uh, cargo airport in the world. Uh, 4.5 and we're going to beat that this calendar year. This, these are dates are back to October. We are coming very close to our capacity for a two runway system, 420 thousand uh, ATMs per year. We're at 412 here up to October and we're, we're pushing that envelope. And that's of course why we need to expand to a third runway. Um, I'll touch very briefly on the work of, of my colleague Alex who's sitting down there. Um, uh, and, and I'll do that again later. Um, in terms of um, the, the airport, it, it's like a village. You never stop changing it. Uh, and we haven't done it. We've done that. We've spent more than $30 billion since it opened just on keeping it current and, and constantly upgrading it to make sure that it remains uh, one, one of the best airports, well, I think the best airport in the world, of course. Um, uh, in the end of 2015, we opened our midfield concourse. This is our rather iconic um, I-shaped concourse in the middle uh, in the, uh, the airport, hence this name. Um, it, it allows us to handle uh, in excess of 10 million additional passengers getting on and off an aircraft from a concourse. So it's very important in terms of our, our passenger facilitation. Many innovations in that um, uh, project. Um, I was very happy to, to conclude that, and, and the, the, the design of that is informing the design as we go forward, uh, both for what we're doing with T1, but also for the third runway concourse. There are a lot of expansion projects that Alex is doing, uh, well, I'll take credit for for the moment, um, is uh, around Terminal 1. We, you probably appreciate we, we've done a lot of things. We, the retail was not great when we opened, so we actually, uh, about two years after we opened, in fact, we changed the retail completely, and it's a good... Again, it's a, a good thing, I think, in terms of infrastructure. Infrastructure lasts for a very long time. You have to make it flexible. Uh, and that's never been more uh, important than today, where things are changing at a faster pace, I think, than, than perhaps 20 years ago. There are a number of projects. Uh, I'll run, we're expanding Terminal 1, uh, the processing co uh, capacity. We're providing an additional check-in desk that is under construction now. It will finish next year. Um, in fact, in our original master plan, it was always anticipated that, that we could expand the processing terminal should it be necessary in the manner in which we're doing it. Um, although a very much more updated version. We're also, it sounds terrible, an extension of car park four. Um, we should have thought of a better title of that because it's very much more than an extension. It provides uh, a home for our aviation academy. We have an aviation academy that's uh, currently um, uh, up and running. Uh, it's very, very exciting in terms of what we're doing in terms of, of building people, young people are coming into the industry who, from all walks of life and all, all types of, of work within the airport uh, through that Aviation Academy. That will give a permanent home for that. It will also give a community center for the, 
the airport. We have 70,000 people working at the airport uh, and we don't have that single facility. So in 2019, Alex, I know, will produce a fantastic building that will give us that. Um, so no pressure, Alex. And this is another one of his projects. Um, so this is Sky Bridge, you may know about. Um, uh, it links our, our lovely North Satellite Concourse. That was built a few years ago. It's a fantastic facility. It's for narrow-bodied aircraft. Um, uh, it, it's, it's people, I don't know why I don't like it, because you end up with a bus going backwards and forwards. Trust me, it's still very, very efficient compared with getting at the FR end of the building. But nonetheless, we're building a, a fantastic Sky Bridge that will link it to, uh, um, to the Terminal 1 building. Um, so, uh, I, I'm mindful for time, I'm just going to get on back into the three runway system, uh, which is um, uh, with me. Um, so, um, uh, I'm sure you, many of you have seen this slide before. Um, we called it the three runway system, again another poor title. Um, the, the airport is it's more than a third runway, of course, we're building very much more. We're building the runways, taxiways, we're building a new concourse um, uh, between the nor current north runway and the new north runway. Um, we have to reclaim land uh, very significantly, uh, and the, the processing terminal T2 will be beside Terminal 1, a very much bigger expansion of the current processing terminal at T2. Um, it will become a full processing terminal, but both arrivals and departures, and we link that through with a very sophisticated APM system and baggage handling system. Uh, I'll briefly touch on those a, a little bit more. Um, just in terms of uh, construction, it's $141 billion dollars um, Hong Kong, which is 114 billion pounds these days. Um, uh, the timeline we started a year ago, a little over a year ago. The first thing, obviously, we've got to build a, a reclamation. That started, as I say, at the end of 2016. By 2022, we'll open our north runway uh, and we'll immediately close our existing north runway because there's a lot of infrastructure where we have to build tunnels underneath the existing runway. That can only be done when that's closed. So we'll have two very fast-paced runways in, in 2022 and in 2024, will open the full 3RS system. Um, I, I just want to, uh, again, Douglas, I see is back at there. Uh, when he was building the original airport, um, he was able to take out the marine mud, uh, a very good engineering solution that they, in those days. We, we're not allowed to do that now, of course. Um, and so, um, for environmental reasons, we are, we're leaving um, the marine mud in, which gives us some complexity on the, on the reclamation. Uh, we also, as if that's not difficult enough, we also have some contaminated mud pits um, that uh, are in that area which we also have to deal with. So in terms of a plan, uh, you'll see the pink area there, we're using uh, deep cement mixing uh, as a technique, we're also using deep cement mixing as the foundation for the seawalls because we're not dredging under those as well. So all the marine mud stays in, we're using deep cement mixing. The deep cement mixing um, that we're doing is actually the biggest in the world in terms of marine DCM by, by a significant factor. Um, we have many hundreds of thousands of clusters. Um, if you want to know what a cluster looks like, this is how the DCM works. Um, it, it's, in, in its essence, it's a fairly simple technique. It's a ground improvement technique whereby uh, you basically mix into the, the existing marine muds, which are very soft, uh, a cement in, in, in clusters, uh, and those clusters together form a stable um, platform for the construction of the reclamation above it. So um, that's one innovation to overcome the problem that we have in terms of, of, of a reclamation without and making it environmentally acceptable, as, as, as environmentally acceptable as we can. Uh, obviously, we're, we're removing forever a, a certain element of marine uh, ecology, but we're, we're very, very cautious to try and do that in the best way we possibly can. Um, I, I mentioned that uh, Terminal 2 um, is, is opposite Terminal 1 at the moment. It's a, only a small departures facility at the moment um, with a lot of other facilities in it, uh, including our cross-boundary um, coach facility, which is uh, extraordinarily busy. Um, terminal 2 is going to be doubled. If you, if you look, here is the uh, footprint um, of Terminal 2. The, the red dotted line is the current T2. Uh, as, as we turn it into a full processing terminal, which will be uh, departures, all the check-in, um, and from arrivals, you will arrive there and also you'll have the rec reclaim belt belts uh, the, as, a, as a full processing terminal. Um, so uh, we're going to double the size of T2. Um, so um, we're also building other facilities around it. It's a very significant project. We must remember also the APM system, which runs under the building, oh, yeah. um, uh, it connect connecting T1 through t the current T2 and out to our Sky Pier, uh, which is a quite a unique facility whereby uh, Sky Pier, probably the best um, uh, ferry pier that you've never visited in Hong Kong, 
Uh, it, it's used uh, extensively by people coming in. They don't actually enter Hong Kong airspace. They come into Skype here. Um, they're, they're security cleared, and then they, they travel through to Terminal 1. So it's a, it's a transfer facility, a truly intermodal. We handle uh, almost 3 million passengers through that facility uh, last year. Um, so we have to keep that APM run, line running. We've got to build the building over it. Um, uh, we've also got to build what we call the AIS, which is the integrated station, which is whereby the APM uh, cross-platform connection between the existing APM system in T1 and, and the new APM system that takes you out to the third runway concourse, which is between the two, the new runway and the current north runway. We'll also have a very extensive baggage handling um, uh, uh, basement uh, adjacent to that. Uh, through good design, um, the Terminal 2 most of the underground basements we need to add are outside the footprint of current Terminal 2, so we've already started construction of, of those. Um, uh, and in fact, we just awarded the contract uh, at the end of last year, um, and we'll be working on that, all the foundations for T1, T2, before we, we do ultimately close uh, Terminal 2 to allow um, the full construction and remodeling of it to make it uh, the, the full processing terminal. Um, we, are, we use a fairly traditional RAA uh, contract, but nonetheless recognizing some of the difficulties um, associated with, in fact, the tunnel uh, to the, the right of that screen where we go underneath the existing APM. Uh, we've just led a, a very large tunnel contract, um, over $2 billion, and we've done that on NEC um, target cost. So again, we are, I believe, flexible. We, we try and choose the right contracting strategy to suit uh, the challenges, and that's one where we hope, working collaboratively with the contractor, we'll be able to um, deliver the project um, with a, a, a gain share rather than a pain share. Quickly moving on. Um, so the Terminal 2, which is going to be um, vast expanded from its current, um, but at the same location beside Terminal 1, obviously that's where you have all of the ground service movements. That means that as you check in, uh, you will then travel by APM to the new third runway concourse. Uh, we will have an APM system, it's a must-ride system, so therefore we have full 100% redundancy because uh, there's no alternative way of getting to the third runway concourse. So uh, a very elaborate system we're there. We've already awarded the contract for the APM. Uh, again, we want to be ahead to make sure that all the design is done in advance before we start uh, constructing. Obviously, vast part of that facility can't yet be built until we finish the reclamation sufficiently to start the tunneling works, uh, as is the third runway concourse. In addition to the APM in the, running in a separate but similar lined tunnel, we have the baggage handling system. This will use um, uh, what's called an ICS, an individual carrier system, uh, state-of-the-art type baggage handling system, very different from our current one. It's much faster because it has a lot much further to go. The, the distance is 2.6 kilometers from the one building to the other. We are thinking ahead. We're, as I said before, flexibility is important. The, the technology, the, um, the growth of the airport, we think, we hope, we're allowing for the fact that the third runway concourse could be expanded in the future should it be needed to. Uh, again, the baggage handling system, we've awarded already that contract uh, to get ahead uh, of ourselves in terms of the design so that everything is properly integrated when we come to, to cut ground and start building tunnels. Um, and then really the last major piece of infrastructure is the third runway concourse. Um, uh, it's, it's, as you can see, a sort of a Y shape. It's been allowed. We could expand. It will have an, uh, an APM station. It will have a second one if we do expand it. Um, again, we're, the, the keynote is to make sure that it's, um, it's flexible and we use as much uh, technology in it as we can. Uh, here's an early rendering of what it would look like. Obviously, the design for that, we've got a few more years before we start building it, so we're working very hard on the design for that now. Um, green design is obviously crucial. Um, it, it goes without saying. Uh, our, our midfield, which we opened in 2015, uh, achieved Hong Kong Beam Gold Standard, uh, and we put that as our minimum marker now for the future for our other buildings. Um, we are using BIM, um, and, and just a warning for those of you in the supply chain, um, we will require BIM of our contractors, our suppliers, we'd certainly demand it of our consultants. Um, I will say I am concerned, we've used BIM on midfield, and we've used it on North Satellite Concourse with some degree of success, um, but I'm, I'm still worried in Hong Kong we need to wake up and really, really commit to BIM. We need to train more people, and we need, people need to do, it's not getting your CAD guy um, trained up to do BIM. It's a lot more than that, so please uh, wake up. We, it's the main contractors, but also we need the first tier uh, subcontractors to be able to work with that. Um, I won't show you the fly through here because it will probably break the computer, but anyway, we, we're modeling everything. Um, we're modeling the buildings, of course. We're modeling the systems. We're modeling the structures. 
Um, and we're also modeling the civils works, so it's, uh, uh, it will be a fully integrated BIM of the whole thing, which will n neatly give us, and we'll tie it to GIS and everything at the, uh, as we proceed. I'll just finish with a few slides very quickly. Uh, we, um, our chief executive talked about smart, you won't be surprised to say we're, we're thinking about smart airport. We're thinking of that now, and again, we're back to these borrowing few slides from Alex. Um, these are, um, we've got to do that now. Uh, the airport, if you think about how you, you use an airport, it hasn't changed, you'd think that much in the last 20 years. But actually, it's changed quite a lot. But it hasn't changed in 20 years, it's changed in the last five years. The pace of change now is picking up. It's because people, um, very few people check in advance uh, in Hong Kong just a few years ago. Now everyone checks in at home. It's not because of the little machines we have at the airport. It's because people use their phones, they check in at home. Uh, and so we've got to make the, the, the airport smarter from the, from the before people arrive, travel to the airport, right the way through to their experience through the airport. So online check-in is there. Public transport information is crucial. Um, the way public transport, we, we currently have our MyFlight app, which I hope you all have, uh, which is fantastic. It's integrated, but it also you can, you can book your parking space now, of course. Um, interestingly, for, for me, it's a challenge in terms of we're opening this in seven years' time. I've got to think about what the infrastructure or what the technology is going to be in seven years' time, not now. Um, and so Alex is working very much on upgrading where we are now. I'm thinking about where it's going to be in seven years. That's another leap forward if you think about what we were doing just seven years ago. Car parking will change. We have talked about earlier about Uber in terms of self-driving cars. How we arrive at the airport will be very different. How we, how we interact with the airport in terms of self-baggage drop. We're designing facilities that may have a completely different check-in from how we, we envisage and use it now. Um, and of course, things like security. We have, to, we have to design flexibility in the future because security, it, it only ever gets more secure, but, it, but hopefully it will become much simpler and already our, our immigration department are using uh, um, recognition uh, uh, systems to, to move forward. So, um, of course, indoor wayfinding is another thing. The use of data, um, we're already with our MyFlight, you're able to navigate through the building with signs virtually showing up on your phone. If your camera works, I'll finish there. Thank you. Thank you.